there's a passage in the canon where an old man who's been sick comes to see the Buddha, and the Buddha says, well, make sure that even if your body's sick, your mind isn't sick. And that's an important lesson to keep in mind as we're going through the winter season and everybody's getting felled by either a flu or a cold or something. So the body may be sick, and there's, no, it's, there's some things you can do about it, and other things that are just totally beyond your control. And so you give it medicine, you look after it, and then you have to really look after your mind. And that's why we meditate, is to give the mind an independent place so it doesn't have to depend on the body. To begin with, you start out with part of the body as your object. You think about the breath. The advantage of the breath is that you can do a lot about the breath. You can change the way you breathe to make it faster, slower, heavier, lighter, deeper, more shallow. And this can have an impact on how the breathing feels, how it feels if it's painful in the body or if it's pleasant in the body, whether it gives a sense of well-being or not. You can have some control over that. So focus on the breath and try to breathe in a way that feels good for the body right now. That way you take advantage of the fact that you do have some control over the body. We talk about the body being not self. Well, it's not totally out of your control. In fact, if it weren't somewhat under your control, there wouldn't be the illusion that it really is who you are. So take advantage of what control you do have and use it for getting the mind a place where it can settle down and have a sense of well-being in the present moment. And when the mind stays still, that's the mind's own source of real pleasure. And the Buddha once said that there is no pleasure other than peace. Now, we could probably think of a lot of very unpeaceful ways of getting pleasure, but the pleasure in each case is that the mind can stay with the object, whatever it is, for a while, and not be bumped off. So that's the piece we're talking about, the fact, the fact that the mind can stay focused. So you want to have it stay focused on something good and wholesome, good and skillful, like the breath, because that gives a sense of deeper well-being in the mind as well, not just the peace and stillness, but also the sense that what you're doing really is good. Having a good impact on the body has a good impact on the mind on into the future. So try to get the mind to be friends with the breath even though the rest of the body may suddenly decide that it's not, not your friend anymore. And after all, that is an illusion. We think that this body and has, is, has our interest in mind and it's our friend, and was not always the case. When it gets old, it doesn't ask permission. When it gets sick, it doesn't ask permission. When it dies, it certainly doesn't ask permission. It doesn't say it's just a convenient time to go. It just does its own thing. And as it ages, it goes bit by bit by bit. It hardly lets you know, and all of a sudden you realize, okay, this thing that the body used to do is not doing anymore. It used to repair itself well, and now it's not doing such a good job. So the mind has to learn how to repair itself, so it doesn't have to depend on the body for its well-being. That's why we meditate. So let's keep that in mind, that even though the body may be sick, the mind can still be in a good state. You don't have to worry about the fate of the body. It's going to go someday anyhow. It may go faster than you want. But as long as the mind is in good shape, you're safe, That's because that's what really matters. So do your best to put it in good shape and keep it in good shape. This is something that it's a skill that can be mastered. So work on this day after day, because it's one of the most important things you can do for yourself. Your own sense of well being. And when you're taking good care of yourself inside, as I said in the say in the chant that we repeat every day, look after yourself with ease. Other beings are put at ease as well. If you're flailing around and not able to handle your own pain and you're creating a lot of burdens for others. But a lot of the practice is learning how to look after yourself in, in the same way you're looking after other people. 